Good morning, folks. Anyone catch any shooting stars of the Lyrids? It's tough to tell if this was part of that group or just a rogue fireball, but Argentina got quite the show. It was visible for hundreds of miles. Coming right to quakes, Canary Islands are now more than 24 hours with zero shaking. The Rat Islands in Alaska are swarming this morning, and this, 5.9 in Mexico, is the third six-pointer downgraded this watch. Speaking of the watch, we all remember that Iran quake missed all watch periods and should be considered the largest failure of the year so far. Bounced right back nicely this watch, however. Now by popular demand, I've added minor and major watches together up top. Major watches only at the bottom. That's the one I care about. Here are the stats so far for this year. Major watches only down at the bottom. We've isolated 39% of the 111 days so far in 2013, but managed to capture 77% of the large quakes. Moving on to a shootout just outside the Watts Bar nuclear facility. Can't wait for more info on that one. Only top two weather stories today. This low creeping out of the Mediterranean is doing so fully energized and all these areas here are under severe lightning watch. Meanwhile in the US, this seemingly harmless pack of sparse clouds is about to hit a wall as they approach the line of convergence swinging south out of the northernmost and strongest low pressure cell that cool, dry air will slide down the Rockies and smash into warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico. They will sort out equalizing pressure, moisture, temperature, and electricity all their own, but trust me, everyone below them will know about it. Shifting to space weather, where the gamma blasts are coming fast. We just had our fifth gamma burst in a few days, third in a row from way up in Celestial North, this time Draco let one fly. Cosmic ray density, still on the rise as well on both Bartol monitors. You can ignore literally everything except the yellow here. Solar wind speed refusing to peak over 300 kilometers per second, which is considered the baseline for normal solar wind. And while solar magnetics are weak, energetic flux is strong. One of the blasts coming off the western limb a few days ago set off the Earth footprint, and a surge is taking place at this time. Took this last night so you can compare polar radiation flux with a moderate flare energy centered on the equator. Flaring tapered off a bit as the new day began, but I wouldn't count on that staying true one bit. Even with two years of Earth-facing quiet and solar magnetic shutdown, I will not ignore a monster delta spot on the Earth-facing disk. Remember, we don't want to see the big one, but moderate flaring is absolutely needed at solar maximum, and this is a great candidate to give them. Umbral fields are wide open. Luckily, we are just about at our first 24 hours of calm since the quake watch began. But with the Earth passing between Saturn and Venus today, a full moon midweek, and a few more days of coronal hole influence, we must continue the watch a bit longer. Shots of our star to close? Eyes open. No fear at 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.